Joining me now, Brian Fallon, who's the National Press Secretary for the Clinton campaign. Brian, great to see you. Thanks for having me. So I'm sure you think that she won, and she did beautifully. Uh, but let me ask you, I do. let me ask you this uh, before we get to the spin. Uh, the, she, <laughs> she's taken some hits for uh, claiming she didn't say that NAFTA was the gold standard. She did say that, right? So how did, what did you th make of the fact checking that was done on the spot? Uh, on TPP. Yeah, I'm sorry, on TPP. Uh, right. So, look, I think she explained that in the course of the debate. Uh, at one point when she was Secretary of State, she was hoping that the deal, when it would, would finally negotiated in its full detail, would be something she could support. Once she saw the details of it, it failed to meet her tests. She's been pretty clear and open about that. But she denied saying that it was the gold standard, and she did say that. That was something that was said at an earlier point before the deal was negotiated. I think overall, though, she only issued the economy. The first 15 minutes were devoted to the subject of the economy. Mm -hmm. I think she took the fight to Donald Trump right away. Uh, this, the economy was the number one issue that we wanted to talk about in this debate because it's the number one issue on the minds of all the voters, including all the persuadable voters that are left in this election still making up their minds. And I think from the beginning, she showed that she was the candidate that had the plans to get wages rising in this country. And she really put him on his heels when she said she wants to build an economy that works for everybody, not just those that have a loan from their father to help get them started in business. And that really seemed to touch a nerve. So what is, overall, uh, did she execute the plan that you had for her? Because we were told by the team that she wasn't going to really try to draw him out, that she didn't think it was worth it. But it seemed like she, that's exactly what she did. She was on the attack most of the night. Well, I have to be honest. We were surprised by the Donald Trump that showed up tonight. <laughs> I mean, this is the Donald Trump that we saw all through the primary, but I really thought that his debate coaches like Roger Ailes and Kellyanne Conway were really going to impress upon him the need to really come and try to strike an even tone and show a temperament that he hasn't shown at any point in this campaign in, in a last-second bid to try to seem like he's temperamentally fit to be commander-in-chief. Instead, I think that anybody that had concerns about Donald Trump heading into this debate only had those concerns heightened. This was somebody that, in the tail end of the debate, uh, se seemed to really go off the rails. And he at one point also, tried to... Well, I think that he doubled down on uh, some of the biggest lies that he's told in this campaign, whether it was his role in promoting the birtherism theory or his support for the Iraq war. I think that led to a tangent that was, quite frankly, hard to follow. Um, what did you Can I ask you about the birtherism, though? Because understanding all that Trump did to promote that lie, okay? Right. Gr granting for the purposes of this discussion that he did promote that. She she did some of that as well. No, she didn't. All right, explain why that's true because sure. what the McClatchy Trump was right that the McClatchy bureau chief from the time came out and said that Sim Blu, Sid Blumenthal, who was her right hand person, came to him and said, "Go to Kenya, go investigate this." It, we think Trump may have been born there, and so they sent somebody over to Kenya to go investigate it. So Politico looked into those claims, actually, and a couple weeks ago, Blake Hounshaw from Politico actually published a report. He talked to the reporters that were based overseas that were actually tasked by this editor in Washington to look into this. I remember. And they said, this is something else entirely. We weren't looking into birtherism. They claims. said they couldn't remember. They said they went over, and, they, and, they, and what the reporter who spoke with this McClatchy bureau chief said was, I'm certain that would have been one of the things they asked us to look into. He said, I don't actively recall it, but I'm certain it's one of the things they would have asked us to look into. So what Donald Trump really stressed on the debate stage tonight, he invoked the former campaign manager of Hillary Clinton's from 2008. Patty Louise Doyle. Right, and said that she went on television last week and admitted that they had some role in the birtherism conspiracy. That's not at all what she said. She acknowledged that there was one was regional fired? organizer in Iowa that was peddling this, and as soon as they learned about it, they fired that person. She fired. There's just a huge difference between just that. Just to let our audience know, this is your candidate, Hillary Clinton, leaving the building, uh, probably going home and taking a rest after a long, long night here in, uh, and the former President Bill Clinton, uh, after a long, long night here at Hofstra University, which was full of fireworks. Sorry, Brian, go ahead. Uh, well, I think actually that we have a debate watch party close by. Oh, is that right? Making a stop there. We'll see. Okay. Well, it wasn't a comment on her health. I'm just saying okay. it's been a hell of a day for even the reporters, never mind the candidates. I think she looked pretty tireless up there. She seemed very spry. Her health, her health is fine. Is she over the pneumonia? Uh, well, I think she's, it takes a while to get over the money, but she certainly didn't show any signs of it tonight. Before I move away from the birther issue, and I want to see if we have the sound bite, do we have the sound bite about, uh, on, on Trump talking about how he did President Obama a favor? All right, we don't, but uh, let me paraphrase. He, he basically said, and I have the notes here, um, that I think I did a great job for the whole country on that and, and for the president himself to get him to release that birth certificate. There were audible gasps inside the auditorium when he said that. What was your reaction? 
I mean, what nerve, what chutzpah to act like he did the president a favor after trafficking in a bigoted birtherism conspiracy for five years that undercut our first African-American president. I think Hillary Clinton put it in pretty poignant terms about what that meant both to the country and to the president personally. And it's a shame that he just won't apologize. What do you make of the fact that these polls have tightened to a place that's got to be somewhat uncomfortable for the Clinton campaign? She had a, you know, almost seven-point lead in the real clear politics average. Now it's down to, at best two. Colorado, he's up one now. Pennsylvania, within two. All states that she was winning by double digits just a month ago. Absolutely. Uh, you're exactly right. The race is tightening. And one thing that I don't think people should conclude from tonight is, that even though I think this was a huge victory for Hillary Clinton, I don't expect any big change in the polls. I think that's just the nature of the race. I think the contest is going to be tight all the way through the finish line, and it's really going to come down to the ground game. Last question. Hillary Clinton went on record and called yours truly a superb journalist when Trump was attacking me. Why won't she come on The Kelly File? I agree a thousand percent with her characterization of you as a superb journalist, and I think it's only a matter of time. Before the, gen before the election? I'm going to go back right after I walk off this platform here and make the case that we can get, get her on the show. Brian, thank you. Okay. Appreciate you being here. Now, Donald